Yeah. I'm serious. I'll make my purchases. Yeah. I'll do that too. Especially if they're over $50 or something. Uh, okay. Call to be a steward, guys. Yeah. What you guys find out in the same? The things that I'm going to share with you today that God has given to you because He loves you, that this is love for you, is what you are stewards of. Whether you're sharing the gospel or not, whether you got a ministry or not, whether you're feeding people or not, whatever, whether you're doing what you think I'm doing or not, God has blessed you with something and you are stewards of this. Yes. Not to mention the truth that you receive right here every Sunday, and God knows what else you receive the truth. You're stewards of this also. Yes. Yes. Because we need to look out for your stewardship. Huh? Yes. Yes. It does define who you are. Right? All right. We're all servants of Christ. We're all servants of Christ. Just because you haven't confessed Him, just because you haven't confessed Him, just because you don't think you're where you need to be to be a servant of Christ, Christ died for you. Yes. You're among His land. He is your King. You are subject to Him. The question isn't whether or not you're His servant. The question is, what kind of servant are you going to be? All right, brothers. It's time. It's time. It's time. Let's learn a little bit about how God loves us, brothers. Today I hope to show you something. Today I hope you feel something. And I hope you recognize that what it is that you feel is what God has given to you out of His love for you. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you want to know something, brothers, usually it's best to go back to the beginning. Yeah. Listen, what's that? Trace your steps till you find out where you took the wrong one. And yeah. go back to the beginning. Let's go to the beginning today, brothers. I want to look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 25. I'm not going to read every word, but listen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And that was the evening and the morning of the first day. And God said, let there be the firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And gathered together of the waters called He seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth vast, the earth yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its own kind. Her seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, an earth yielding seed after its kind. And the evening and morning on the third day. And God said, let them be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and give us soul. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the days and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good in the evening and morning of the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fall that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moved, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every wind of fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply the earth, and the evening and the morning on the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God saw that it was good. Yeah? Now, brothers, on the sixth day, God made you. Huh? Yeah. The difference between God making you and God making everything else. As he didn't speak you into existence. Huh? They come down from on high and fashion you out of the clay of the earth. I breathe the breath of life into you. That's special. Yes. Huh? I consider that special. Yeah. yeah. Alright. He didn't speak you into existence. He made you. Yeah. And then he formed something into you with you, didn't he? Yeah. Everybody perform CPR? Have you ever seen CPR perform? Yeah. That's very intimate, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, you really have to care about somebody to put your mouth on with you. I'm just saying, all right, yes, this is how God gave you life. All right, God loves you, brothers and sisters. He loves you. 
Genesis 2, 16 through 25. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought him unto Adam to see what he would call him. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to all the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmate for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman, and brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now a bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall the man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave her to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. I'm going to hold up just for a second. Let's go back and look at some of this. All these things that God made. Yeah? Yeah. Let's look at these animals. All the animals of the earth and the fowl of the air that God made. All these things that God found to be good. Did God ever make anything? Yeah. Never made anything to hands? Never built anything? Made at work? Never put together a model, painted a picture, colored a picture, something? Yes. When you were finished with it, when it was complete in your eyes and you looked upon it, was it not good? Did you shock when it was good? Yes, yes. Think about that. God made all these animals, these animals that he found to be good. And what did he do? He had Adam in the name of them. Didn't he? He must have loved Adam, man. Yeah, that's basically that. I didn't take credit for his creation, didn't it? Tell about him the name now? Yes. All right. Well, what about this woman that he made for him? Adam was alone, wasn't he? Yeah. No help made for Adam. Yes. And so he made him a woman, didn't he? What do you think Adam felt after he gave him this woman? Did he feel alone anymore? Did he might have felt some companionship? Some fellowship? Some brotherhood? Brothers, listen. This is something that we've all felt. This is a gift that God has given to us. Not just in the woman, yes, which He did give to us, though I know it seems to be quite popular in this world today that we should go after the same kind. But trust me, God made the opposite kind for you, yeah, for a reason. Yes, yes. And it was so, you would not be alone. A feeling, a feeling. Let me see more of you felt alone. Loneliness. How'd you like that? How does that feel? Alright. Yeah. That's terrible, isn't it? But man, it's great to have somebody in you. Even if they're not good for you. Huh? Even if you know they're not no good for you, it's great to have somebody in you. To feel that companionship. Even if it's an unhealthy relationship, you'll stay with them, won't you? Yes. Alright. Just saying, brothers. That is something that God has blessed us with. Because He loves us. Yes. And that's something that you can feel. That's something that you have felt. To know that God loves you. Yes. Listen. Genesis 1. 28 and 30. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and to over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I give you every herb but every seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree you can see. To you it shall be for me, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw that everything he had behaved, and behold, it was good, in the morning and the evening were the sixth day. What you think about that? For those of you who said that you had made something with your hands, that you had created something, that you had put something together, that you found to be good, how many of you would give that over to somebody else? Just here you go. Have it. 
dead. Alright. Give them dominion over this whole creation. What kind of love would it take to do that? What kind of love would it take for you who build a business? Who made a painting? Who made a garden in your yard? Who built a tent? I can't say. Anything that you put your hands to to make that you found to be good. Do you know what that means? When you find something to be good, that means you enjoy it. That means you take joy from it. Yes. You take joy and put in it. That's why it's called enjoy it. Yes. And he gave that away. It takes love to do that. Wouldn't you have to love the person that you would give something like that to? Perhaps a tutor. Maybe one of your children. Maybe you give it to one of them. Yes. Would you have to love them to do that? Just say it. Hey, God loves us. And He gave us this earth. And I know, look, I know it's not the same. I know we don't have the same dominion in the earth that God gave to us. I understand. But whose fault is that? Is that God's fault? Or is that our fault? Did we create this society for ourselves? Or did God? Alright. Alright. We're the ones that gave up our freedom. And I'm still trying to figure out part four. You know? Yeah. We're the ones that gave up the ability to go out somewhere where nobody's living and take the resources around us and build a house and live and live good. We gave that up for some reason. Yeah. For, I guess because we've got to go work 40, 50 years of our life to pay somebody else to have a house. I don't know. That's what we need. It is what it is. All right. It'll change. Trust me, brother. It'll change. When Christ comes back, you'll build your own house. When Christ comes back, put them in your own food. All right. This is what He gave us dominion in this earth. This beautiful place that He created with His own hand. This place that He calls good. He gave you what it was. He took joy in. Yes. Because of His love for you. Yes. All right. All right. God loves this place. He loves us. Yes. Psalm 127. Except the Lord built the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waited in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth sleep to his beloved. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Where you got kids? Where you got kids? Gifts from God. Huh? Gifts from God. Now, what I gotta ask you is, how many of you has taken that gift that God has given to you? Huh? Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. I'm not here to put you down today. I'm here to lift you up, boys. Yes, yes. God has given you something. I know science explains to us how it happens. I need it. I understand. But God has given you these gifts. Because He loves you. Now, what I gotta ask you is what kind of feeling are you able to experience through this gift? How many of you teach them the right way? Child to teach the right way. I understand it. Yeah, all right. How good does it feel to teach somebody something that's true? Some of you have felt that before. Some of you have felt the joy of telling the truth. Some of you have felt the joy of raising someone up in the truth. Yes. Yes. All right. To be a teacher. Yes. But as long as you think about that, I don't have any children in my voice. Huh? But each and every one of you sitting here today that has heard the gospel in my voice is my child. Yes. If I have brought you true and you have applied it and it has succeeded in more fruit in your life, you are my son. Alright. Because that's an opportunity for you to make up for the things that you did in the past that you learned to be wrong. Yes. 
It's not your atonement. The blood of Jesus Christ is your atonement. Yes. But it's an opportunity for you to bear down about this. You did in your past that wasn't on you. Why? Because you gave it purpose, didn't you? You used it to save someone else's sorrow. Perhaps it's salvation. All right. That's a gift, brothers. That's a gift that God has given to you. Because He loves you. He is a gift. It's not a gift that He has to give to you. God don't got to give you anything. Sometimes we get all full of ourselves thinking God's got to give us grace. God's got to forgive us. God's got to give to us. No, He don't. He don't got to give you nothing. If you have anything, if you have any good thing, it's because God loves you. Yes. And that includes your children. Those of you that may need to, brothers, you might step up. Maybe that's what you're doing now. Yeah? All right. I'm not making it. This is 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, we need our one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Uh oh. We have apple juice. We can put him to that. Many of you have been baptized. Join in. In the water. Yeah. In the body of Christ. You have been baptized into the body of Christ. This is a gift to you. God has given you a place in the body of Christ. Yes. I don't know how many of you guys are taking advantage of that. Yes. But there happens to be a fairly awesome feeling from this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You might put it to work to receive it if you have not. Yes. All right. Yes. It's a righteous feeling to be in the body of Christ. Now, we are not righteous. Our righteousness is as good to be as. Because we can see. Yes, all right. But Christ has done. And His body is righteous. And God has given us a place as a member in this body. You know, member, arm, leg, finger, toe, eye, ear, nose, mouth, head, yes. That's a member. God has given you a place in this body. So I think some of you might have felt this righteousness. It's all right, all right. It's not your righteousness, but Christ's. And He shares it with you. Brothers, that's an awesome feeling. That's an awesome feeling that you have in a love life. I'm just saying, all right, man. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. Okay. Anyways, that's a feeling that God has shared with you. That's an ability that God has given to you because He loves you. Love for you. And so that if you have experienced that, you have experienced God's love for you. Yes. Yes, what a wonderful awesome spirit, brothers. Yes. Yes. First Corinthians 11, 1 through 3. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Uh-oh. <laughs> so that's God has given you in. It's given you the head of Christ, hasn't it? Alright. Brothers, I want to be honest with you. I don't know what's right. Now, like I told you last week, I know what's wrong. Don't I? Yeah. All the mistakes I made, I know what's wrong. But I don't know what's right. Until I wear the head of Christ, then I know what's right, don't I? Because now I think with Christ's mind, don't I? Now I see the world with Christ's eyes, don't I? Now the words I speak are the words of Christ, aren't they? Yes. Righteousness. To be right, brothers. Yes. This is the gift that God has given to you. How many of you have been out there in the world worried, scared, anxiety, stressed out because you didn't know what to do? You didn't know the step to take? You didn't know where the guidance was? Yes. All right. The head of Christ, brothers. Now you have these things. 
Now you have this ability and you should wear the head of Christ. Yes. Alright. The feeling. No more perplexity. No more confusion. No more fear. Why? Because you know. The question is, do you know? Do you know? Alright. But these things that God has given to us are an integral part of who we are as Christians in the life of Christ. Yes, yes. And very important. And each one of these things is a gift from God. It is God's love for us. Yes. And it ultimately it is something that produces a wonderful feeling within us. A feeling that we can feel. A feeling that should motivate us and drive us and create passion and zeal within us. To do what? With all of our minds, with all of our hearts, and with all of our spirits, folks. Listen. We learned this was the great commandment. Yes, yes. We learned that this was not just us commanded to us, but God loves commandment to us. And I told you, until you were able to feel that love, how are you going to be able to return? Well, as I'm giving you revelation after revelation after revelation today, and I hope you take it to heart. I hope you take it to heart because of all the things I'm sharing with you today, I'm certain you felt it this morning. Yes. Alright, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. 1 John 2, 1 through 6. Excuse me. John 3, 16 through 18. How about this? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten sin. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. What kind of gift is that? God sent his Son in order to die for us. And I'm not a single one of you sitting there that know that and have not heard that before. But what I gotta ask you is, what is the feeling? That's supposed to produce a feeling in you. That's a feeling of being loved, of being cherished, of being honored. Yes, yes. How many of you have been such a sacrifice? I don't know. You know, there's times in my life I've been thinking to myself, yeah, I can do that. Or I tell myself, yeah, I can do what Jesus did. Yeah. But it's time to do it in two different things. Yeah. All right. Being in that place at that time and doing it is totally different. It's very good to say, say that I would do it. Okay. Because this has been done to you. God did do this. Christ did do this. And it is love for you. Yes. But more than that, folks. More than that, having felt this love for us, what does it do in us? It gives us the ability to love. God has shared love with you. If you have ever felt the joy of loving another person, it is because God gave you the ability to love. The greatest love on earth, right? Isn't it? This is it. Yes. Even in your limited understanding of what love is, it's the greatest feeling on earth. All right, folks, I'm going to bring my love to you this So that you understand it. So that you can feel this perfection that love is. Yes, yes, okay. All right, let's turn it to us. God has given us love and the ability to love, folks. First John 2 1 through 6. My little children, these things that I add to you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby do we know him, if we keep his commandments. 
He didn't say it. I know him, and he did not his commandments is a liar, and the church is not in him. But whoso giveth his word, and him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him also to walk, even as he walked. Brothers, I don't know. You know, there comes a point in your life when you realize what you've done is terrible. When you realize what you've done is wrong. When you look at these people and you realize that you have wronged them terribly. And you begin to feel that. Yes. What do you tell yourself? There's no way I can look up for that. They should never love it again. I'll never be the servant. I don't know. These are some of the things that I thought of myself and said to myself. Yes, why? How could I ever forgive somebody that had done the things to me that I had done to other people? All right. Yeah. That's called getting real. That's called being real. And yet, and yet, brothers, we can fear this forgiveness. Amen. Why? Not because of what we have done, yes, but because of what Christ has done. Do you understand? Again, that should produce a feeling in you, knowing that God has forgiven you and made an atonement for your sin, made it as if it never existed. To know that somebody would do that to you, again, it should produce a uh, Mighty, mighty swelling feeling in your chest. And if it has not, folks, well, it's time to get to it. It's time to get to it. Yes, because without that, without that, we're not going to make it. Without that acceptance, without that kind of silo, you know, no, not going to make it. You'll never change. I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to tell you today. Without that silo, And I can say that with certain positivity. Yes. Don't worry, friends. We'll bring that message to you. And you guys, you keep coming, man. Huh? You keep coming, and I want to give it to you. You understand what I'm saying? For those of you that are real, for those of you that want to change, for those of you that want a better life, for those of you that want to be better than you were the day before, you keep coming, and I'll keep giving it to you. You understand? All right. All right. Jesus Christ died for you, man. So that you can be forgiven. Yes, that's not something that you can. That's something that He's done for you. Again, that's to produce a great feeling in you. You should understand God's love for you. What you say that this has been done for you? Yes. Yes. John 3, 4. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Oh my goodness. Right here, right now. How many of them are you taking? How many? Each and every one of those breaths that you're taking is evidence of God's love for you. How many of you have been in a situation you were without breath? I'm just saying, cognizant and aware, not able to believe. Boy, that's a scary one there. That's happened to me a time or two. I'm just saying, all right. Love brothers. Something that you can always take hold of. Something that you can always remember, can't you? Every breath. How many of you are going to waste it? Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. How many of you believe today? I gotta know. How many of you believe today? Why? Because it's not what you do. It's what God has done. You believe because of what God has done. Not because of what you've done. It doesn't belong to you. God is 
faithful to keep his word, brothers. To his chosen. Yes. Make no mistake. Yes. If you're sitting here today with a measure of faith, it's because it's been given to you. It is the gift of Jesus Christ. Yes. First John 4, 1 through 10. Beloved, believe not, or beloved. I'm serious. Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. How many of you raise your hand, Mr. Lee, brother? I'm just saying, brothers, how it is. And it's love. It's love. It's time to start turning a little bit of that. If you're suffering, if you have not yet, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, where I even have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome you, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that owneth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. And this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here it is, love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. I know I've already said that once, brothers, but I can't stress the importance of that enough. I just don't know. I don't know. I know a lot of you guys are up there. I guess maybe finally having accepted that you're addicts, that you have a problem with taking drugs or alcohol, perhaps. I don't care. Okay. Yeah. All right. But the realization that you're going to have to come to before you clean up is that you need forgiveness for those sins. Yes. That first you are a sinner before you are an addict. Yes. I'm just saying, man. It is what it is. I'm begging you now. I thought it was not the first time you heard that before. Okay, yes. It just might be, brothers. It just might be. If you go to the one that can heal you of your sin, you might get healed of your addiction. What do you think about that? I'm just saying, huh? What do you think about that? Addiction is of this world. Yes, yes. That's something that you're not playing with. That's something that you're not cursed with. Yes. Brothers, there's no curses for obedience. There's only blessings. Yes, yes. All right. God's going to move from His children. Yes. You are His children. The fact that you're sitting here, the fact that you're raising your hands when you were asked if you believe should be evidence to you. Yes. It is God's love to us. And I know how to do it. I know it's not something that you can't reach and grab a hold of and feel. I know it's not a warm hug. I understand these things. I know it's not something that you can walk into and close the door behind you. It's not something that you can get in and sit down and take off in. It's not something that you can put on your feet. I understand. I understand. But, above all else, it's something that you can feel. Yes. But it's, I've been out here. For those of you that have been homeless and are homeless, huh? I've been out here living on these streets with nothing. Absolutely nothing. The prison grounds on my back and my state boots and that was it. Okay? Yeah. Guess what? I had joy. I had joy. It didn't matter what stuff I had. I had joy because I knew I was loved. I can feel it. I have felt it. Yes. Because I can tell you today, 
and we take the head. I don't have anything else. And you walk forward with that, returning that to the one who shared it with you and doing what the one who has shared it with you is telling you to do. You'll give you anything else. Just say, I like for nothing. First time in my life, man. I like for nothing. I got excess. I got a surplus. I'm just saying. God is good. Hey, let me give you what you need, but guess what? He's a loving daddy too. He might even give you some things that you want. Amen. What do you think about that? I'm just saying. Yeah. If we as people know how to give good gifts to other people, don't you think our Father in heaven knows how to give us a good gift? All right. It is because He loves you. I know. You still haven't gotten that pump. You still haven't gotten that pump. You still haven't got that television and that car and that job and that house and that other thing that you've ever asked God for that He ever gave to you. I understand. But my question to you is, how long have you been loving Him? All of you that raised your hands and said you were parents, how many of you want to do anything other than give clothes and food to your children? When they speak ill to you, when they treat you like crap, when they don't do what you say, all right, yeah, yeah. You continue to provide for them because that's your duty. But beyond that, you generally don't do that when you're upset with them. Do you think it's quite possible that God could be upset with us? Do you see me up here shouting and hollering? Do you think that your father was standing before you right now when you speak to you very similarly? I don't know. I don't know. I know he would have spoke that way to me, and probably worse. Yeah. He would probably had an aneurysm in his eyeball yelling at me so hard. Just saying. Yeah. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. The hope, the hope is that despite that, God still loves you. The fact that he's standing here hollering at you is a sign that you are still loved. How many of you chase after somebody that you don't even care about? Trying to tell them the right thing to do. The right way to be. Alright, alright. God loves you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, brothers. I would. That's it, we call it my children. Verse 10, verse 2, you have to it. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have answered to the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of that man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Brothers, nobody knows you. You'll never be another hundred person to understand you. What do you think about that? You'll spend the rest of your lives trying to explain yourself to other people. To show them your heart and your mind. And they'll never understand you. <laughs> Why? They can't see your heart. They can't see your mind. They can't dwell within you to see these things. Oh, sure, they can hear your words and they can see your actions, but they can't know this the truth, can they? All right, some people do the thing that they think they Some of us was, uh, what you might call a hustle, huh? I'm just saying, okay, yeah. But God, brothers, God can see these places. Can he? Yes. They said that we can't know the heart and mind of God. Except what? Except that He revealed to us by His Spirit. Now, in order for His Spirit to reveal that to you, it must be within you. Think about that. The Spirit must be within you to reveal that to you. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. 
one speed. One speed, but I don't know which I think about that. I don't. But he had his journey to the Lord with one speed with the Lord. But that's the thing that he said to you. To be a part of him. To be, to be like him. Yes. That's the last thing. No, uh, God is the creator of everything. He is the sustainer of everything. He is my everything. He is this whole world, this whole universe, everything. And He gives us the opportunity to be one with Him. I don't know, guys. You know, uh, there's lots of people that I give lots of things to and do lots of things for, but there's not one that I give to be one with me except for my wife. Yes. All right. Just say it. God has given everyone who loves Him to be one with Him. That's a great love, brothers. That's a great love. And I promise you something. When you become one with God, there will be the greatest minute that you've ever experienced in your life. I'm you felt that, didn't you, brother? That same day your head's not laid on you, you felt that, didn't you? Hallelujah. Did you say it, brothers? Huh? But then you come out of that water, you felt that, didn't you? Any time we talk about it, you feel it, don't you? You say it, brothers? Huh? Yes. Praise God. It's real. It's real. God is real. His spirit is real. And when it comes upon you, it's something that you feel. It's not something that you see. It's not something that you can be so bad as if you can it. But it is something that you can feel. It's something that you know. There's no doubt about it. And so we have it. Love, love, brothers. Love! Evidence! That's all I'm going to want it was the evidence, isn't it? And then all we ever wanted to believe was to see. But God is not going to let you see. But He is going to let you feel. And by what you feel, you should be telling me. Because of what you feel. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else can do that. Can't nobody else actually project their spirits inside of you to see it all here to feel but God. And it's close. And it's the last issue. John Lord is right to the church. But as many as received him, to them they be the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I don't know, guys. You know, I know. Yeah, all right. I know. I don't have mine. I don't have dad. I grew up in institutions, man. You know? Yeah, okay. I didn't know what love was. It took me a long, long time before I got to understand what love was, especially the way that I shared it with you. Yeah, it was this, 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 and the next, and the last, and the next, okay, all right. And even though I knew I was a servant, this, I did not know or believe that I was a servant. But I, I believed I was a servant, yeah. Okay, I mean, God's all powerful. He's over everything and everything. Be his servants. Even if we didn't obey him, we were still his servants. Okay. But he's telling us if we receive him, we shall have the power to become his servants. Servants no longer. We should be brought inside the master's house. We should no longer have to be outside to serve him, but we shall be inside. Yes, it is. All right. It takes a lot of love. A lot of love to change something like that. And I know this is the first name experience, you know. There's a few people in my life, man, that I have done this with. Yes, okay, I just said it. Yes. To be a son of God. I don't know how you feel about that. Man. But to me, it makes me feel so good. All I gotta do is receive it and believe, and I'm his son. It's a righteous thing to us to give you the ability to love, to feel companionship, to feel joy, 
to fear righteousness, to teach other people, to be included in the body of Christ, in this righteousness, to share and wear the head of Christ, courage and boldness in the face of adversity, of all adversity, brothers. Yes. You put that Christ head on, you'll understand what I'm saying. Yeah. To be one with the Spirit. To be one with Him. All these things, all these things are the great love that He has for us. In the midst of our crookedness, of our sin, of our shortcomings, and all the things that we do. That's the kind of love that God has for you, grace. Now that you've got that, now that you know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, because I am absolutely positive that you have felt at least one of these things. Yes. You have felt a love of God for you. It's time to return. It's time to take that intensity and return it in right measure. As it was measured unto you, so measure it back. And not just to God only. Because as we learn, those who love God also love their brethren. Yes. And keep God's commandments and all Jesus Christ. It's just a certain purpose. It's never ending. It's an enduring thing. Round and round and round and round until you don't have to go around the whole world. The day is coming. The day is coming for all of us, folks. Yes. But no mistake. You know this. You know this. It's not something you don't know. It's something that you need to start applying. It's something that you need to start living. It's something that you need to start giving. We're all 21 here, aren't we? All right. All right. Because I saw a lot of hands go up, and I asked him to look at this. And that's it. That's all she's doing. And there were some hands I didn't see go up. Those I don't know why you're coming. I hope it's to see with the Lord. I hope it's to start to make yourself to that which you have received. Yeah? Jesus Christ said, believe and be baptized. You shall see. Yes. Yes. That's a declaration of faith and love. And one that I'm through. Faith and love. The two things I see that takes the people to the basic thing. Yes. Yes. It might be something that you can see, yes. You'll be to see. And how it comes tomorrow. You heard the truth today. You felt the truth today. You know that God loves you. It's time to start loving you. It's time to start loving you, yes. Yes. Alright. Alright. We need that. Let's get that in. I'm ready. I brought the calves. I brought some cheese, man. I brought some lamb. Yeah. Alright. Alright, guys. Let's close the prayer. Lord, we are thanks for this love that you have for us, Lord. You know that we know it, Father. We've kept it our whole lives and never know it, Lord. No one has ever shown us. No one has ever told us, Father. Father, we give thanks for your direction this day, Father. We give thanks for your understanding this day, Father. We give thanks for this love that you have shared with us, Father, through Jesus Christ and through those around us in our lives that we have yet to see, Father, and that we have seen, Father. Father, we pray you pour out a double portion of this blessing upon us this day, Father, this strength, Father, this compassion, this passion, this boldness, Lord, this courage. And we're not overcome in this world, Father. To be with you. To join ourselves unto you, Father. To be one with you, Lord. Teach us and lead us, Lord. And all things, Father. Lord, we we'll just give thanks for this opportunity. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. That's the love. Sacrifice, guys. I forgot the socks today. Sorry.